Hello, George Romanich here. Today we are going to talk about ballistic missiles and how Coriolis force can affect them. Or rather, how we have to take into consideration Coriolis force if we want to calculate trajectory of ballistic missiles. Ballistic missiles means missiles that are covering large distances, hundreds of kilometers to potentially even thousands of, kilo thousands of kilometers. Text of the problem is now on your screen. So the problem says we have a missile that is fired from the surface of the earth and now it has some ballistic trajectory. Initial velocity of this missile is u0, v0, w0 and now find trajectory, find how this uh, missile will travel. Well, this is the surface of the earth. This is height, positive up, but I will put my coordinate system at the origin from where the missile was fired. So this will be my positive z, this will be my x, which is positive towards the east, in atmospheric sciences, that's zonal direction, positive east. Z is positive up, and Y direction is positive north, meridional direction. I explained all these things in previous videos. So, if we take, of course, that this is height, and this is missile that is now traveling, what are the forces that are affecting this object? Well, we have gravity, mg, pulling it towards the center of the Earth, but the missile is traveling in respect to rotating Earth, and therefore there are two other forces, centrifugal force and Coriolis force, and we are particularly interested in the Coriolis force, and you will see why. So these forces are also affecting the trajectory of this object. Therefore, if I write now the greatest law ever discovered, second Newton's law, for this object, it will tell me that mass times acceleration of this missile is sum of all forces that are acting on it. Well, I just said that the forces are mg as a vector plus centrifugal force plus Coriolis force. We are neglecting air resistance that's written in the text of the problem. Well, that means that mass times acceleration is equal mg Centrifugal force is minus m omega cross omega cross uh, r, where omega is angular velocity of the earth, 
and r is the radius vector from the center of uh, from the center of the earth to the missile and and uh, minus coriolis force is 2m omega cross v where v is uh, velocity of this missile after it was uh, launched. And M is mass. Notice that M, 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 and M cancels everywhere, and we end up only with accelerations. Now, I told you we are particularly interested in the Coriolis force, because when you have these ballistic motions, omega is a small number. You will remember that omega is a very small number for planet Earth, 7.3 times 10 to power negative 5, approximately. So notice that this term, namely centrifugal force, is order of magnitude omega squared, omega omega. But the Coriolis force is order of magnitude omega, which means if omega is small, that this term is very small compared to this term. If omega is large, then this term is much larger than this term. And I demonstrated in a separate video case when, when uh, centrifugal force dominates Coriolis force. That's the video on uh, if you are driving Range Rover and you decide to make a sharp turn. So you are in a car, you make a sharp turn, you feel centrifugal force every day, but you don't feel Coriolis force because your angular velocity is very high and this term is proportional to the square and this term only to angular velocity of the earth and therefore uh, this can be neglected in that case. But in the case of today's video where omega is very small of this missile and here uh, therefore Coriolis force dominates over the centrifugal force so we will just neglect this force. I am sure that when military conduct these calculations, they keep this term, I would assume, I don't know. But uh, to my knowledge, if you keep this term, then the equations later become so complicated that I'm not sure, but I think you cannot solve them using simple functions. So it gets way, way more complicated, but the precision doesn't increase significantly. So for the for, the, uh, for this video, we will only keep Coriolis force. So we get that acceleration is equal uh, g, gravity, minus 2 omega cross v. Of course, we cannot neglect gravity. That goes without saying. Now, we need to write components. So g has components 0, 0, minus g in this coordinate system. And negative 2 omega cross v, I derived this so many times that I will stop deriving it. So you will just have to know that this minus 2 omega cross v, I mean, not just have to know. You have to go back to my videos if you don't know and see how to solve this cross product. Because, I will write this down, that omega, components of omega, are uh, 0 omega cosine phi, where phi is latitude, and uh, omega sine phi, where omega is uh, magnitude of the angular velocity of the Earth. So if you solve this cross product, knowing that V has components U, V, W, you get that this is equal in the i component, uh, in the i direction, sorry, and i direction is positive eastward. Again, this is one of these a little bit more advanced videos, so I suggest that, uh, I assume that you already covered my previous videos and you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know anything about Coriolis force, then this is not the first video that you should watch. This is 
as you can see, a little bit more advanced, and I am already assuming that you know these things. At any rate, in the i direction, which is positive eastward, here we will have f v minus f prime w. Then in the j direction, we will actually have minus f u. And in the k direction, we will have positive k. k is positive up. Uh, f prime u, where uh, f and f prime are, of course, f is Coriolis parameter, 2 omega uh, sine sine phi, and f prime is 2 omega cosine phi. All right, so that's the, these are the co components of the Coriolis acceleration in the zonal, meridional, and vertical directions with these substitutions where u is zonal wind component positive eastward, v is meridional wind component positive northward, and w is vertical wind component, uh, or wind, I mean uh, missile, component positive upward. So now, we, when we know components of these two vectors, we can write this vector equation as three scalar equations. And I will do that here. So, uh, in the... <clears throat> x direction, so what I'm doing, I'm rewriting now this equation as three scalar equations. So acceleration in the x direction, I will write it as the second derivative of x with respect to time, because the problem asks from us to find trajectory, which will be x as a function of time, so it's convenient to rewrite acceleration as the second derivative of uh, position is equal, well, there is no g in the x direction, and here I have v, uh, sorry, f, f times v, but v is dy dt and minus f prime w is dz dt. In the y direction, I have that d second y dt squared is equal. Again, there is no g in the y direction, and I only have this one. So that is minus f times u. But, again, uh, instead of u, I will write here dx dt. And lastly, in the z direction, d second z dt squared is equal. Now, don't forget, there is negative g gravity, negative g. And uh, we have this term over here, plus f prime times u, but u is dx dt. This is a system of differential equations that describes the motion of this projectile. If we solve this system, we are done with today's problem, which is not the easiest problem, but not so difficult either. So this system of equations is what we call as I said in my video in the, in the focal pendulum, coupled. You can see that here dx dt is on the right side, but here it is, uh, it is uh, its own differential equation. So, to solve this system, we will first 
integrate, so let's call this equation number one, this is equation number two, this is equation number three. I will first integrate this equation two times with respect to time, t. Now, I would like to explain you how you do that properly. To do that properly, you, know, you need to know what is the derivative. Because quite often, what I also tell my students in books, they will just give you result. They will say, you integrate this two times, and then they give you result. And that's normal because they cannot explain every single step. The book would have 10,000 pages. But here, I can spend some time to explain you how you double integrate uh, an equation and what that means, or triple integrate and so on. So if we need to double integrate equation 2, that means we write it like this. d dt of dy dt. That's the left side. So you can see this will give me d second y dt squared is equal minus f dx dt. Now I can multiply this with dt and I will get here d of dy dt is equal minus f dx. Now I integrate left side d of dy dt is equal minus, we assume that f is constant, integral dx. Now you can solve this integral as, or rather these two integrals as indefinite integrals and you will have integration constant or you can, we can use the initial conditions that our problem is giving us and notice that at time, at the beginning rather, x was zero because our coordinate system for this projectile is such that I put coordinate system at the position where the projectile was, uh, from position from which the projectile was launched. So I go from x equals zero to some position x later along the trajectory. And here, initial velocity, now notice this is velocity, d y dt, initial velocity was v naught, and later it has some velocity v. Now, this integral over here is uh, equal v minus v naught. But again, v I will write as dy dt minus v naught. So that's this integral. Again, so v minus v naught. But v is dy dt is equal minus f times x, this integral. Or, usually, of course, you will see this as dy dt is equal, we move this to the right side, so minus fx plus v naught. So this means we integrate this with respect to time. Now, I will do, as you can see, now I am able to take this equation and substitute here. Because here I have dy dt, dy dt I found it. I have dz dt over here, which means if I integrate this equation once with respect to time, I will be able to substitute result of that integration to this equation, and then I can integrate this later, and that should be the end of the problem. So let's integrate once with time this equation number three. So it's the same procedure as this, so I'm not going to go every single step. 
So you will see if we integrate equation 3 with respect to time, I will have d of dz dt is equal integral minus g times dt and plus f prime integral dx. I hope you can see, let me see if you can see this right side and where my camera is positioning. Ah, okay, you can see it, it's good. So uh, when we substitute, I mean when we insert limits, again, x goes from zero, that's the initial position of my projectile, and that's at time t equals zero, and the initial vertical velocity is w naught, and then I am at some location x in the zonal direction at time t, and I have velocity w, but I know that w is dz dt that I also used here in terms of y. So solving this integral, we get dz dt minus w naught, but I will move that to the other side. So that will be equal, this integral is minus g t. This integral is plus f prime x, and I have this plus w naught that I move from the left side. And this is velocity, dz dt, velocity in the vertical direction of this projectile. Now I take this equation and I take this equation and I plug them in equation 1 and then we again integrate with time but two times to get trajectory. And I will do that after I erase this blackboard. So we had equation 1 for acceleration in the x direction and we found velocities in the meridional and vertical directions of this projectile and now what we need is to plug these equations 4 and 5 into equation 1. So I can do that maybe here. So that will be d second x dt squared is equal f dy dt I take from this equation so it will be minus fx plus v naught minus f prime dz dt I take from equation 5 and that will be minus gt plus f prime x and plus w0. Now, of course, you could continue and uh, integrate this with respect with time and so on, but you will end up with a quite complicated expression because you will have many terms. We can simplify that using physical reasoning, as always. And the physical reasoning that is the following. F squared or F prime squared or F F prime, all these terms are order omega squared because F is 2 omega sine phi, phi is latitude, and F prime is 2 omega cosine phi, omega is angular velocity of Earth. Uh, so if omega is small, and it is small, then these terms are order of magnitude omega squared, and they are way smaller, which means this term can be neglected after we multiply with f, and this term can be neglected after f prime is multiplied with this f prime over here. Which means that from this reasoning we get 
that d second x dt squared is equal f v naught plus f prime g t this and minus f prime w zero. Now we need to integrate this with respect to time two times. So go back uh, some ten minutes ago in this video to see how this integration is carried out. So uh, we will have here that uh, d of dx dt is equal, an integral of this is equal, here we will have uh, f v0 dt integral plus f prime g t dt integral and minus f prime w0 dt integral. And uh, integration with time starts when the projectile was launched and that's at time t equals 0. And at that time initial velocity in the x direction was u0, that's given in the problem, and then velocity reaches some value u, and that is at time t. I told you many times previously that mathematicians wouldn't be such happy with this notation, because in principle you should have different uh, symbol for the limit of the integral and the function over which you are integrating, but these are mathematical formalities, we don't have to think about that in, uh, when we are do doing with some physics and we know what we are talking about. Because as Richard Feynman famously said, when mathematicians are solving something theoretical, they don't need to know what they are talking about. They can talk abstractly. But in atmospheric sciences, oceanography, wind engineering, physics in general, when you are solving something, you need to know what you are talking about. We are talking about Coriolis force, about gravity and so on. And therefore you can go around some of these mathematical formalities that mathematicians have to follow. At any rate, this integral here will be u minus u naught, but u is dx dt, and u naught I will again throw to the right side at the end, hopefully I don't forget. If I forget to move this u naught there, remind me through the camera. So here we have f v naught t plus f prime g t squared over 2 minus f prime w0 t and plus this u naught. So this is velocity of the projectile in the zonal direction. But now finally we can deliver the final blow and find trajectory x after integrating one more time with respect to time t, and when I find x, look, when we find x, we can plug x in equations 4 and 5, and then find trajectories in the meridional direction and vertical direction for this projectile. So again, we integrate this with respect to time. So here, we will have, again, uh, I will do this a little bit faster maybe, Again, we will have integral here between u naught and u. Uh, sorry. Uh, we will have, because when I multiply, well, let's do it. 
let's do it. So we have dx, dx, I multiply everything with dt, is f v naught t dt plus f prime g t squared over 2 dt minus f prime w naught t dt and plus u naught dt. And now I integrate, time goes from 0 to t, here uh, times goes, goes from 0 to t, here also time goes from 0 to t, here the same from 0 to t, and x, well, x goes from 0, that's initial position of the projectile missile, to some position x that depends on t. So, that means that x as a function of time is equal, oh, let's see, so here we have t squared over 2, so we will have uh, f v 0 over 2 times t squared. That's this term. Now this term will be plus, uh, this will be t cubed over 3, and 3 times 2 is 6, so it will be f prime g over 6 times t cubed. This integral over here is minus f prime w0 divided by 2 t squared, and this integral is plus u naught uh, t. And this is trajectory of the missile in the x direction, and x direction is positive to the east, negative to the west. Now we take this expression and we plug it in equation 4 and then integrate with time to find the, the trajectory in the y direction. So that would be dy is equal, I will immediately multiply with dt equation 4, so it will be minus f times x which is this over here, and that will be f v naught 2 over 2 t squared plus f prime g over 6 t cubed minus f prime w0 over 2 t squared plus u naught t times dt and plus, plus v naught dt. Now again, we don't have to carry all these terms uh, around. Here is not squared, but prime. We don't have to carry all these terms because again, I will use this physical reasoning that when I have f squared, f prime squared, or f times f prime, these are higher order terms, and they can be neglected. So this times this, well, this will become high hot, higher order term. This will become higher order term, f prime f f prime f will also become higher order term, and that means zero. Higher order terms means zero. And this will survive. 
So after now integrating uh, this, and I integrate again, time, time goes from zero, and at that time, initial position of the projectile was zero, and then it reached some position y at time t, So we get that y as a function of time is equal, so this doesn't exist, only this exists, and that will be mm, this minus f u naught over 2 t squared. That's this integral, and then we still have this integral over here, and that should be uh, plus v not t. So this is the trajectory of the projectile in the y direction where y is positive northward, negative southward. And lastly, we take this equation Let's call this equation number 6. This is now equation number 7. We take equation number 6 and we insert it in equation number 5. Let me do that here. Again, I will immediately multiply with dt. So I will get that dz is equal negative gt dt, don't forget gravity in the vertical direction, plus, now let's speed this up, because I don't want to write this entire equation. So notice that this term will multiply with this f prime, so this term will disappear, this term will disappear because they are higher order terms, omega squared, this will disappear, so only this one will survive, so I will have f prime u naught t dt and plus w naught dt. Again, I integrate time goes from 0 to t and here as well. And here initial height of the projectile in respect to the Earth's surface is zero, and then it reached some height z. So when we solve this integral, now we get that z as a function of time is equal, well, I don't have more chalk, so is equal here we have minus g over 2 t squared. Here we have plus f prime u0 divided by 2 times t squared. This is t, by the way, limit of the integral t and plus w0 times t. And we can say that this is equation number 8, if we wish. And this is trajectory of the projectile in the vertical direction. Notice something very interesting. If we neglect rotation of the Earth and we neglect Coriolis force, if we neglect Coriolis force, f is zero, f prime is zero, this is zero, this is zero, this is zero, we get this term. This is zero, we get this term. Uh, this over here is zero, we get gravity and initial velocity term. 
If you neglect the Coriolis force, you end up with the equations that you probably derived at some point in your high school physics for the motion of the projectile, or you derived it in undergraduate physics course, depending you know, where you studied physics. <clears throat> but without Coriolis force, it's just motion of the projectile, like this chalk, if I throw it in, a, in any way, I give initial velocity u0, v0, w0, like this. Then, you neglecting air resistance, the equations that describe motion of that object are these equations setting f and f prime to zero. Question, why would you set up these to zero for the motion of the chalk? Well, Coriolis force can be neglected in these cases because these are very small distances and very short flight times. And from my previous videos, you should know that you need long travel time or long distances in order for the Coriolis force and the rotation of the Earth to be important in these calculations. So this is how you tack these types of problems. This is how you calculate trajectory of the missile, of a missile. Until next video, goodbye.